the dark side of minimalism that no one talks about. Hi everyone, as you guys know, I have been passionately following the path of Millism for nine years now. And it has added so much value in my life with so much clarity, so much direction, so much authenticity. It's something I really respect and value. However, the truth is there have been times in my life where Millism has been slightly toxic. It's formed an element of self-destruction and has almost been a bit of a dangerous trap for my own mental health. So I wanted to share with you my personal opinion and the five things where I saw as being the pitfalls, the downfalls, even the dark side of Millerism. So that if you are on a path of Millerism, you can be aware of these and you can see the warning signs and you know how to safely navigate around them so that it doesn't impact your own personal journey with this incredible lifestyle movement. Number one, control. So one of the problems I found with minimalism at certain points in my life was it was becoming a sense of control, self-destruction, and as a result of that, negative self-talk was just rising up inside me and really impacting my mental health. This was where I found that I really struggled to accept the fact that I did need duplicates, I did need multiple items because something had changed and evolved in my life. And I was getting really frustrated, really irritable, and I started to feel like I was dishonoring and becoming a failure around minimalism, that I was falling out of it, and it made me kind of panic. Now, the moment I realized that this is just part of the natural ebbs and flows of life, I learned to let it go. But I wish I had known about this before it happened, so that I never actually allowed it to impact my mental health. Two, disappointment. So when it comes to minimalism, you tend to have a lot less, but because of that, you tend to have a larger sense of gratitude, respect, and of course, appreciation for what you do have. That's one of the best things about minimalism. However, if you have less and then something happens to one of those items, it gets stolen, it breaks, it wears out, the feeling of loss, almost an element of grief, can be felt far more intensely and actually really impact your mental health, whereas you had lots of things, it would be no big deal if something happened to it. For example, lipsticks. I know this is gonna sound really funny, but I lost my favorite lipstick. And because I only had one of my favorite lipsticks, I really felt sad and upset and almost an element of grief in my life because it was gone. Whereas if I had lots of different lipsticks, it would have been a big deal really. And I would have been able to get back on with my day and not really be negatively impacted by it. So again, being aware of the fact that you may feel disappointment, loss, or even frustration when something happens to the limited stuff that you have in your life because of minimalism. Three, workmanship. So I know they sound really old, but they don't make things like they used to. I feel like these days, things are only made to last a year or two at best. And I understand this is probably the commercial world that we're living in because they want us to keep on buying and upgrading and replacing. However, if you're a true minimalist, you buy for long-term love. So when you find something that actually wasn't as well made as you initially thought and it falls apart or it wears out or it breaks and actually can't be fixed or replaced, the feeling of remorse, the feeling of disappointment, the feeling of being bitterly upset can really be heightened if you're really trying to live a life aligned to minimalism. So, and whilst there's nothing where you can really do about this, just a simple awareness so that if that feeling does come up, we understand where we're coming from, but we can actually learn to let it go and understand that this is unfortunately sometimes a natural part of life. Number four, other people's clutter. So in becoming a minimalist, I really looked at my own home and making sure that it was clutter free as possible. And for me, that was great in my own home. It made me feel calm, it made me feel organized, it made me feel relaxed. But then the problem happened when I'd go into somebody else's home that had a lot of clutter. Instantly, I would feel like I was drowning, I'd feel like I was suffocated, I'd almost sometimes feel like I was a little bit dirty. And this really became a bit of an issue when it came to getting out of my own home and going and visiting other people in their homes. So again, I've had to really understand how to show respect of how other people like to live their life. And I've always been very vocal about understanding that minimalism is for you and you should never try and impose it on other people. That also means letting go of judgment of other people who choose to live a life that is, for them, happily filled with clutter. And then number five, the natural evolution with minimalism. 
So when I first fell into minimalism, I was a mum with just one baby. In fact, I was pretty much a single mum. So I only had myself and my son Rocco to look after, which meant there was a lot less stuff around us. Now I have three children and my partner Tom is really messy and loves clutter. In fact, for him, his sense of happiness is a really busy, hectic, chaotic, cluttered home. That to him represents like a wholesome, authentic family life, which goes completely against what actually makes me feel calm. So for me, I've had to really let go of, again, that control and understand that life does naturally evolve. Of course, I still try and keep our home clutter-free, tidy and organized, and also try and lead by example to my children. But I've had to really embrace the beautiful things that come from the natural evolution of life. Having three children is a blessing. Having a home is a blessing. Being able to have stuff that clutters your home is also a blessing. These are all things that I need to be grateful for. And something that I'm learning ever so slowly is hard, but it's helping me understand where this actually does fit authentically within minimalism and understanding what's really important in my life. And that is, of course, making sure the people in my life are happy especially when it comes to our home. So let me know what you think of this video. Have you found personally a couple of traps or toxic traits that come within minimalism? Have you found that minimalism has been really competitive for you? I would love to hear what you think around minimalism because this is an incredible journey and I'm always wanting to learn more and more every day about this. All right, everyone, I'll see you next Thursday. Make sure you are subscribed. Ciao for now.